A new chapter in the growing feud pitting two members of the so-called squad, Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib and Ilhan Omar, against Israel. They're planning to speak 90 minutes from now about their recent travel uh, trouble with uh, Israel. But they're also likely to get asked about a very controversial cartoon that they shared on social media. Ben Shapiro is editor-in-chief of The Daily Wire, a syndicated columnist and host of The Ben Shapiro Show, which is crowd favorite. Everyone loves it. Ben, we want to put up this cartoon and have, could you explain to people how offensive it is? So the, the cartoon is not merely offensive because it basically paints Benjamin Netanyahu's arms silencing Rashida Tlaib and Ilhan Omar as the Israeli flag and invokes, obviously, the idea that Israel is trying to silence these Muslim congresswomen. But it turns out that the person who created this cartoon came in second in the 2006 Iran Holocaust denial contest. There's actually a cartoon contest in Iran for this sort of thing. So imagine that somebody on the right had tweeted out a cartoon by a virulent racist and had done so knowing what that person was. There would be appropriate blowback. You're getting none of that from the mainstream media today. But again, none of this is surprising. Omar and Tlaib were going on a tour that was run by a group that has significant terror ties, that has put up on its own website the blood libel about Jews using Christian blood for Passover matzah, that has posted articles from open neo-Nazi sources. And yet the media haven't covered that either. And when the media are in search of a narrative about victimized Congress people at the hands of the nefarious Jewish state, they're willing to overlook all evidence to the contrary. What do you think that they'll try to say this afternoon when they have their press conference in just a couple of hours? Uh I mean, the same stuff they've been saying before. They're going to say that Israel is an inherently discriminatory state, that boycott, divest, and sanctions, which is an idea so anti-Semitic that Nancy Pelosi called it that two months ago while she was speaking to AIPAC, that that idea is actually a good idea and that the state of Israel ought to be mm -hmm. denied foreign aid based on the fact that they won't allow in a couple of anti-Semites to come and talk about why Israel should be overthrown, which is the basis of the BDS movement. I, let me move on to the other one. You mentioned the media. Let us just talk about the New York Times specifically. There was this meeting last week after the big hubbub about the headline that a lot of people on the left and people apparently in the newsroom did not like. And so Dean Bacay, the New York Times executive editor, brought everybody together and something leaked from that meeting. And it was basically a transcript in which he talks about the outlet's coverage of Trump. And he said it went from being a story about whether the Trump campaign had colluded with Russia and obstruction of justice to being a more head on story about the president's character. We built our newsroom to cover one story and we did it truly well. Now we have to regroup and shift resources and emphasis to take on a different story. And the story that they want to cover is how America has become so divided under President Trump. The president tweeting basically the New York Times, he thinks, will be out of office be, um, after he leaves office, hopefully in six years. And he says because of that, he's fairly certain that they will endorse him in order to keep it all going. What about whatever happened to just reporting whatever the news is? Why do you have to have a vision for what that news will well, be? Well, that, that would be that would be a nice thing. But the fact that The New York Times is obviously deciding what narratives it wishes to sell to its own public right before the election. I mean, this is an activist organization. This is no longer a news organization. I don't even know how they purport to be a news organization when they're explicitly stating that their narrative for the next year or so is going to be about the divisive nature of President Trump and his racism, as opposed to the Trump-Russia stuff. I mean, when you design your entire newsroom around a story to take someone down, that's Media Matters. That's typically not the New York Times, but I guess the New York Times and Media Matters are one and the same now. Uh, well, we joked right in the commercial break that um, there are days when you wake up, Ben Shapiro, and you find out that you yourself are trending on Twitter. And there was a little bit of some backlash last week after you said this. If you had to work more than one job to have a roof over your head or food on the table, you probably shouldn't have taken the job that's not paying you enough. That'd be a you problem. Now, that's taken out of context. And Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez tweeted this to you. One of the most manipulative tactics plutocrats use is convincing people that the systemic issues we face are character flaws instead of policy flaws. Working people aren't dumb or inferior, nor are they why insulin costs $300 or huge companies pay starvation wages. Corruption is. And I thought I'd give you a chance to set the record straight on this and what you were talking about. Sure. The only people who are scornful of working people are the people who believe that socialistic government at the top of the system is going to provide working people with a pathword toward upward mobility. AOC is responsible for the loss of, what, 25,000 jobs in New York City, talking about how she's standing up 
for working people. The reality is that the jobs you choose to take in a free society are the jobs you choose to take in a free society. The point of my statement was specifically directed at Kamala Harris, who was saying that we need to drastically restructure all of American economics so that you don't have to work two jobs in order to put a roof over your head. My point is that we all have to make decisions about our jobs, and thank God we have the ability to do so. That's what allows us to get ahead. I have not only nothing but respect for people who work two jobs, I encourage everybody to work as many jobs as they possibly can to get ahead in the freest, most prosperous country in the history of the world. And I think that your point was that you can't expect then the government to set the wage because that has proven not to work. It's all so irritating. I mean, the fact is that what Kamala Harris and AOC suggest is that they're going to magically be able to make a $750 an hour job worth $25 an hour. It's a bunch of crap. They're lying to you. They're lying to you because they want power and they want your money. And they will get both of them if you choose to believe that the system is keeping you down rather than that most of the decisions that affect your life are in your own hands. All right. Ben Shapiro, we appreciate you coming on today. Thank you.